Good dear viewers, we have with us Nidhi Chaudhary, ma'am, Joint Commissioner, Goods and Service Tax, Government of Maharashtra. So welcome, ma'am, and good to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm elated to be here amongst all of you. <laughs> and ma'am, can you uh, say about your overall experience of, uh, at this event in terms of uh, choices of panel topics, in terms of selection of speakers, and your overall experience? Uh, I am from Rajasthan, so it is always an exciting moment to be back to Rajasthan. But uh, yes, uh, in sync with the culture of Rajasthan, this event has been done with a lot of warmth and hospitality, first thing. So that is what any uh, visitor, any person who is attending as a delegate from other state would want to experience. So on that full points. And as far as the uh, topics uh, for panel discussion goes, or the speaker goes so far, it has been very exciting. It has been very enlightening also to know from what is happening in Andhra Pradesh, what is happening in Gujarat, what is happening in Rajasthan. So there are panelists from different states of India. And uh, I'm sure uh, uh, the, the remaining part of today and tomorrow also, it will be very um, enlightening. And uh, there will be enriching uh, inputs coming from other panelists. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, being a tax administrator, ma'am, what role uh, do you think they can play in increasing transparency and mitigating revenue losses? Uh, it is it is very, very important that uh, the tax administration related policies uh, regulations are discussed in open platforms like this. And industry participants, stakeholders also are attending this. And as a result of the question and answer sessions, the panel discussions, uh, a lot of transparency comes in. People are not aware that uh, uh, Haryana government has got a scheme like uh, the pooling of uh, uh, land for public projects in which people can apply uh, or that Andhra Pradesh has gone ahead with uh, the surveying, which has not happened for past so many years. And Andhra Pradesh is now planning to do uh, the cadastral surveys of all the land. So getting to know these things in uh, an open event like this, wherein the participants are there, it is definitely uh, going to bring in a lot of transparency and the stakeholders get confidence that uh, they are part of uh, the changes which are being brought in through policies. And uh, what role do you think can technology play, ma'am, in terms of uh, optimizing revenue management? <laughs> GST as such is completely technology driven uh, uh, tax. Uh, the, the biggest change that GST brought in was that it was one nation, one tax through one platform. So all the states uh, and the central government is implementing this tax through GSTN. And with that came the e-invoicing, e-way billing, and uh, even now the scrutiny audit and a lot of other things are happening uh, online. Uh, I'm uh, uh, strongly of the opinion that if we really, really want to rope in, bring in transparency and ensure that the tax evasion, uh, uh, evasion is curbed and the honest taxpayers are encouraged and those who are non-genuine are caught in time. It can only happen through uh, effective data analysis, effective data mining, and uh, uh, and after this analysis and mining, using it in the interest of public. So we are able to do it and we will be able to, I'm sure, with artificial intelligence coming into picture, uh, it is going to definitely uh, change the way uh, India has been administering indirect taxes. And ma'am, uh, ever since the introduction of GST, uh, what changes have you seen in terms of increasing tax compliances in terms of generating revenue or in terms of formalizing formalization of the economy? Uh, GST was implemented uh, from 1st July 2017 and unfortunately we had two years of pandemic and unprecedented pandemic and industries got hit. This was a new kind of taxation and uh, Initial days, there were uh, hiccups, there were difficulties, but off late for past, uh, now it is six year uh, of GST and we can see that uh, the compliances have increased many fold and the GST tax uh, revenue collection has uh, increased many fold. So now if we are at uh, uh, 2.7 uh, lakh crore of revenue collection, which the, uh, which the uh, the country is making uh, uh, my figures may be here and there, but the, the numbers are increasing by leaps and bounds every year, single year. The compliance is going to happen because the entire GST system is such that even if one person is claiming ITC, you are going to know who is the supplier, who is so because it is uh, it is a chain in which 
evasion is very difficult to be done because you will be caught somewhere so uh, and all integrated so your invoices are integrated your billing is integrated so uh, it is uh, by this way itself the, a lot of tax payers are getting registered we know like uh, maharashtra has got around uh, 17 18 lakhs of tax payers and same way in the country also we have got more than 1 crore tax payers this is increasing day by day because of systemic reform because it is technology driven a lot of people who were otherwise uh, going uh, un caught are now getting caught yeah. so it's it's uh, going to be with every passing year with the simplification that is being brought in by the gst council i am sure that the the tax base of this country is going to expand much more and the msmes are going to be uh, brought on board a lot of people who are in unorganized sector would probably uh, prefer to opt for uh, uh, gst in order to get the benefits of itc so it's it's definitely going to increase and uh, even the revenues are going to go up only i'm um, as everything uh, everything good comes with a challenge and so what gst as there have been claims of various state that they lost uh, they suffer revenue loss uh, ever since the introduction of gst so and government has to brought in uh, sales to complement uh, state for their losses so what is your take on this uh, gst uh, subsumed in it some 17 k- uh, taxes uh, so there were states which were implementing a lot of taxes local taxes in order to generate own revenues when gst was introduced initially this idea was there since 2008 and it was implemented for and the law came into force from 2017 so nine years of resistance also we saw from the states but being a federal country there was a cooperative federalism that took into place a lot of discussions and deliberations after that gst came into picture now the states which had a lot of uh, more taxes uh, were uh, actually compensated by way of gst compensation scheme it was there for certain years uh, for 5 years and uh, uh, there are uh, demands from some states whose revenues have slipped that uh, uh, they, their compensation should be increased or enhanced or extended especially due to covid pandemic but th- those calls will be taken by the 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 gst council which is which is a federal structure in that it is any decision is taken unanimously and all the finance ministers of the state and the central government are at par and therefore i would like to say that probably it's a clarion call for those states whose uh, revenues have fallen to probably uh, probably look at their revenue management uh, from a different point of view because too much of taxation is never going to benefit their economy and one tax is going to definitely add to overall economic growth of that state so in order to boost the economic growth the manufacturing sector uh, gst is the way yes. and uh, we cannot go back to having multiple taxes last question ma'am as a country like india where uh, whose population is increasing by leaps and bounds and with increasing population comes the increasing demand of people so what important role do you see about uh, effective revenue management system so that the demand of every people is met uh, first i i am strongly of the opinion that 2021 census we are going to see a stagnation coming for first time uh, so decadal growth rate that uh, was rising uh, for past several decades uh, numerically even last decade 2001 to 11 we saw some kind of dwindling uh, uh, the uh, data so this time i believe that we have almost we are reaching that uh, stabilization in population in terms of population because with rise in uh, uh, say the per capita income with rise in now we are a 100 percent literate uh, country in terms of the service ekshabhyan parameters uh, we also have a much more uh, dense uh, uh, internet penetration with all these technological penetrations also happening in the country uh, i am not seeing too much of a population growth rather i am of the opinion that with every passing decade there will be a population stagnation and then we are going to achieve a plateau but even with the current numbers uh, there are there are some statistics which say that we have already crossed china and we are the number one populated country in the world with the current numbers and with the with the fact that yes even today india's uh, total uh, economic uh, gdp if we consider it is a very large number so in order to uh, to meet the demands of uh, roti kapra and makan for every household in this country we need to enhance the revenues and how the revenues are to be enhanced there can be two ways 
One is increasing your revenues through tax and non-tax. And second is reducing your expenditure. So reducing the expenditure which was brought in by the FRBM 2003, somewhere, uh, especially due to COVID uh, pandemic also, we, we lost the track. Fiscal uh, deficit so is increasing, revenue deficit is increasing, we are seeing increase in public debts. If some, some uh, maybe uh, we, we revert back, we go back to the FRBM guidelines and once again bring in a lot of discipline for uh, the, the expenditure side, that is going to add. A, 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 this is my very personal opinion that we are doing too much. Say so it's not the job of government to do everything. We need to probably uh, privatize to shed a lot of roles, which now can be done efficiently by private sector. With that also, we will be able to cater yeah. to the real core jobs that the government should be doing. So this is how I see it. Uh, population is not going to increase. Uh, taxes can be increased, uh, not by increasing the tax rate, but by increasing the tax base and uh, by curbing the evasion where it is happening and uh, obviously by reducing the expenditure on non-core activities. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for saying such a valuable insight. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much.